I don't know. What's up divers? In today's video, we're going to be covering the most useful hand signals for scuba diving. So let's get to it. Guys, today we have a really special sponsor that I'm so excited to tell you about. Eco Roots. If you're in the US and trying to be as environmentally friendly as possible, you really will want to learn more about this brand. Stick through to the end of this video to get a special deal and to see what they're all about. Thanks for joining us here today on our channel, Asul Unlimited, where we teach all things scuba diving. My name is Sarah, and today's topic is really important because we need to know how to communicate with our buddies while we're scuba diving. If you've ever known a scuba diver, then you are very well aware of how much we like to talk with our hands. It's one of those essential things to learn as a new scuba diver. And you'll be working on it throughout your diving career because as you develop and as you learn new skills, new signals will be coming in. And also, whenever you go diving in new regions, you're gonna learn kind of a new diving dialect. Not everyone may agree with me, but one of the best things about scuba diving is that no one can talk to you. It's a sport that you get to enjoy with other people, but you get to just listen to the sound of your own breath. I like to think of it as a moving meditation. But seriously, it's important to be able to communicate with one another, not only for safety, but also just for fun. And a great side effect is that it also expands your communication on land. Exhibit A. If you haven't seen our Don't Fall In Love With A Scuba Diver video, then check that out in the description below. It's very silly and very fun. As I said before, signals can vary from region to region all over the world, so it's really important that you have a conversation with your buddy before you actually get underwater to make sure that you are going to communicate effectively. All right, let's go over the most universal of all the signals, and that is the okay. This is the one that beginners have a little bit of trouble with, just because we are so used to, at least Americans, we're so used to saying okay like this. Just like when you smash that like button, big ol' thumbs up. Thumbs up means something else, we're gonna get to that. But okay is like this, I'm doing okay. Now, in scuba diving, we use this as a question and an answer. So if you have someone show you this sign, they are asking, are you okay? And that's when you want to think about it, consider if you're actually okay, and if you are, then you give them an okay back. Okay, so it's a question and an answer. If you are not okay, then you have a problem. Now if you do have a problem, you want to make sure that you show what the problem is. You don't want to just say, I have a problem and kind of look around lost. You want to actually point out what you have a problem with. So maybe you're having a problem equalizing, maybe you're having a problem with your mask, okay? Something like that. And then another one that I like to teach and that I think is really nice is just the two palms, thank you. Okay, if Need to ask a question? This, kind of that shrugging shoulder, is a good way to say what or where. Feeling lost? Where is the boat? Okay, this is the sign for boat. That's a really good and useful term because you will probably be lost at some point in your diving career. If you haven't already seen our video on how to use a compass for beginners, make sure you check that out. I've put a link in the description below. <laughs> Got a buddy who's moving too much or breathing too hard? <laughs> relax or slow down. This is a movement signal, so you usually have two hands and kind of relax, breathe, <sighs> calm down. You can take this a step further and say stop. <sighs> Let's chat about air. We want to make sure that we know how to communicate how much air we have underwater. Now this is a pretty common signal for that, just asking how much air do you have. And this is really important because we want to make sure that we're checking our air all throughout our dive. You don't have to just wait for your dive guide to ask you this. You can ask this to your buddy so that you're aware of how much air your buddy is using as well. Now in order to actually tell your buddy or your dive guide how much air you have, you need to know some numbers. I really like to teach one, two, three, four, five pointing up and six, seven, eight, nine pointing to the side. Then if you need a zero, 
just a zero, very simple. The reason why I like it that way is because you don't have to use two hands. That being said, lots of people use both hands to communicate numbers. There are two different options for measuring how much air you have, either the imperial system, which is just so lovely and makes so much sense, right? America, it would be great if we could get on the metric system, just saying. And the metric system, which just about the rest of the world uses, bar. When using bar, a full tank will typically be around two 200. It can be 190. Don't complain to your dive operator if you get 190, okay? Sometimes it's 210. Anywhere in that range is a full tank. So a lot of people when using bar will use a T to represent 100 and then the fingers to represent the tens. So if you have 150, be 150. Some people might also use a closed fist for five. So it could be 150 or 150. And remember, low on air is typically that closed fist held up to the chest. That's pretty standard. Now, when using PSI, you have a few more numbers to deal with. The most common ways that I've seen people use PSI is either with one hand and flashing numbers. My personal preference, I don't like that method because I don't like doing math underwater. It's hard. So, in that method, if you were to say have 1700 PSI, you would go 5552. Five, five, it could also be 557. Five, that gives me a headache already and I'm at the surface. So I don't even want to do that underwater. <laughs> For me, when I'm using PSI, I like to use the arm and finger method. I just came up with that. That sounds a little weird, but we're gonna go with it. So what that means with that same number, 1700 PSI, you would do 1000, so 1000 on the arm, and then 700. You could also do 1700. Are we confused yet? Having a rad time? <laughs> the Shaka. This one is so great, so useful because Hopefully, when you're underwater, you're going to be having a really great time. You're going to see some cool stuff, and you're going to want to tell your buddies about it. This is another one that gets confused with the thumbs up. Give and understand directions like a champ. We all need to understand how to move in this underwater world. Okay, up is so the thumbs up. Down is thumbs down. If somebody wants you to stick close to the wall, they're going to do this. Maybe stay close to the bottom. These are really useful hand signals to know when you're going to go diving in current. And directions extend to how to use your equipment as well. So maybe your dive guide or your buddy is going to ask you to add air. Okay, add air to your BCD. They could also ask you to deflate or maybe deflate. Safety first. We're always harping on safety on this channel, so you need to know your safety signals. At the end of each dive, you should be doing a safety stop. That is five meters for three minutes put together safety stop. Okay, it acts as a ceiling, that five meters. Okay, so that's really important. You're gonna see this a lot when you're diving. As you get more advanced and you do longer dives or deeper dives, you're gonna become familiar with DECO or deco, okay? This is the amount of time that you're allowed to stay at that depth, okay? It's related to your nitrogen absorption. As you're diving, your computer is going to tell you how much time you have left at that depth. We really wanna make sure that we don't push our limits here. So we wanna keep an eye on those numbers and stick with a dive plan that is very conservative, that we don't get too close to that no decompression limit. If your buddy or dive guide asks you for your deco or deco, then you would just tell them the numbers remaining on your computer. Maybe you have eight minutes left and that will allow you guys to make plans for your dive. Don't get stuck. Anytime you're dealing with line, you wanna know that this is the sign for line and you can communicate maybe an entanglement, okay? Just moving that finger in kind of a figure eight entanglement with a line, or if you're diving out here in California, maybe you're entangled in some kelp. <laughs> and now for the most important stuff. When we're talking about things that we see underwater, besides things being super cool, we might want to refer to them in the sizes that they are, right? So 
big, really big, or small or itty bitty. Common fish signals that you might see, turtle, shark, barracuda, grouper, groper, grouper, <laughs> angelfish, butterfly fish, trumpet fish, my all time favorite signal, cuttlefish, octopus, clownfish, sweet lips, manta. Now the signals for the fish and the things that you're gonna see are definitely region to region specific. So you'll want to pay attention when your dive guide is giving a briefing about what you could see underwater because they will be talking with their hands during that time and you wanna just keep those to memory. Remember. <laughs> a note about torches. When using a torch during a night dive, you want to try to keep your signals down to one hand and just shine the light on your hand so that your buddy can see what you're trying to communicate. And you can also use the torch beam to make the signal by itself. So if you do a big circle with your torch, that means okay. That is also a question and an answer. So you would want to tell your buddy that you're okay if they're asking you. If you're not okay, then you can just wave your torch from side to side and your buddy or your dive guide will come check on you. So that about does it for me this time. What I want to know now is what are your favorite signals? There are a lot of really funny ones out there, but I tried to keep this video PG. So tell me what your favorite signal is down in the comments below. And now a little bit about our sponsor. All right, you guys know that today our sponsor is Eco Roots, and I'm so excited to share about this brand because I love promoting small US-based brands who are focused on helping the environment. You all know that before we've promoted products found on Amazon, but to be honest, I'm kind of tired of helping Jeff Bezos get more wealthy. So today we're looking at Eco Roots. Here are just a few reasons why I love this brand so much. A portion of each sale goes to Ocean Conservancy, which strives to protect and preserve our blue planet. All of the products sold on the website are cruelty-free, and anything they use for shipping is completely recyclable and free of plastic. Plus, a lot of their containers, the things that the products come in, are actually biodegradable, so that's even cooler. We can put them straight into the earth without causing any problem. EcoRoots also promotes other small businesses, so even if it's not the EcoRoot brand, you know that they're sourcing products from companies who also share that number one goal of helping the environment. Use the link in the description below to check out everything that they have to offer, and right now, get free shipping on orders in the US over $45. This not only helps you to make less of an impact on the environment, it supports a small business, but it also helps us because this link in the description below is a commission link. So we do make money each time you purchase using that link and that helps support the content that we create here on this channel. Remember, we vote every single time we buy something. Use your money to vote for brands who give a damn. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, give it a big ol' thumbs up. And subscribe to our channel for more weekly content. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Good God, guy. Go away, dude. This is impossible, isn't it?